What's up? So today we're going to take a quick minute to talk about bipod selection. I get a lot of questions about, Rich, what is the best bipod that I should get? You know, what bipod should I put on my rifle? And uh, so we went ahead and on the FSW University, we made a video series under our weapon setup specifically focused on the things that take into consideration for purchasing your bipod, which bipod is right for which weapon setup, when I mount my bipod, where do I put it and why, and um, different shooting applications for the bipod or a monopod or shooting sticks or whatever. So I just want to give you a couple tips. If you want to watch that full series, you can go to the FSW University. But for today, I'm just going to give you a few things to take into consideration that can kind of give you uh, a jump start on your bipod selection. So you can see right here we have two major different weapon systems. Here we have a bolt action precision rifle in uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. And here we have your kind of standard duty AR 15, uh, pretty slick, you know, shooting 5.56. In this, the first thing we go is, well, what is the purpose of the weapon system? What is your intent with the weapon system that you have, right? So, that is going to determine which bipod we choose, right? The other thing is, what is the weight of the weapon system that you're using? And then what is the caliber? How much recoil management are we expecting from the round that we're shooting? So why the weight becomes important is, can the bipod support it? The recoil is important because it's, can the bipod support the amount of recoil that it's gonna take through the shot? And the other one with size and weight of the bipod, is it practical for the weapon system that you're putting it on? So let's talk about two different extremes. Now, the 6.5 Creedmoor doesn't have um, all that much kick or recoil uh, as you know some of the other calibers we have here, like the 308 or your 300 Win Mag, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Some of those are much uh, have a much bigger kick. But in this case, let's just look at this. This Precision rifle here, this bolt action rifle is roughly like, I would guess to me, like probably 35 pounds. And this weapon system without the bipod on it is probably, we'll call it nine pounds maybe, uh, with the optic on there. I think the rifle itself is like eight and a half pounds. You put the optic on, so maybe we'll call it nine and a half. But there's literally like 20, almost 20 pounds different between these two weapon systems. So... When we look at what bipod would I put on a, on a rifle like this, which I'm planning on shooting my 6.5 anywhere from, you know, 600 yards, you can shoot this effectively. I've shot this one out to 1100 yards without a problem. I know some people have shot this further. I just haven't had the opportunity to yet, but you got a 600, we'll call it a 600 to 1100 yard gun. This 5.56, five, I'm not shooting it at 600 can you shoot it at 600 yeah but like with this barrel length and whatnot at 600 you're really starting to press the capability of the 556 uh bullet with this setup you know what i mean so this we'll call this you know a three to five hundred yard gun maybe um <clears throat> and that's being very generous it's probably more of a two to four hundred yard gun so with that being said when we look at the weight of this to to manage the recoil of a weapon that is 35 pounds, we need a pretty solid structured bipod. So in this case, on this weapon, uh, I have an AccuTac. AccuTac makes some very solid bipods. It's all you know machined aluminum and it's very rigid. And the other thing is the base is very, very wide. And I'll show you that in a second. <clears throat> Where you have a couple of these other ones where like the Harris is like the in-between. And then in this one, you have a Magpul. So the Harris is a small bipod, but with metal construction. The Magpul is a small bipod, mainly plastic construction with some uh, metal components. This one is heavier than this one, but these are both about the same uh, lightweight. This one's a little heavier, but like a lightweight, streamlined, small bipod. So. When I carry this, I'm not patrolling with this rifle. You know what I mean? Like if I was, this would be like slung over my shoulder with a sling. I'm carrying this in, maybe it's in a backpack or whatever. I'm not like patrolling with a rifle that's 35 pounds in my hand. You know what I mean? With this giant scope on it. 
uh, in bolt action, right? So in that case, I, the rifle's already heavy. Having a heavy duty bipod isn't a big deal. With this one, this is our like patrol rifle. This is lightweight, we carry this, we're maneuvering with this, you know, so we wanna be slick and streamlined, but maybe I wanna stabilize a shot at two to 300 yards. Maybe I'm looking through this scope and I'm trying to range a target using the reticle. It's really hard to do freehand using a reticle. If you've tried it freehand at 100 yards, it's difficult. So maybe I just want something to stabilize this. So in this case, this lightweight plastic and metal Magpul bipod might be totally sufficient to stabilize a weapon that's nine pounds. This is nowhere near sufficient to stabilize a weapon that is 35 pounds. Another thing to look at here, when I was talking about our base, okay, let's look at this. If I take this weapon and I put it this direction, and we talk about stabilizing the recoil and stabilizing the rifle itself, look how top heavy this weapon is. The weapon's 35 pounds and you got this big optic up on the top. So it's gonna be very top heavy. Where this one, you just have this little tiny ACOG. It's not very top heavy at all. If we look at the stance, we take this bipod, if we put them here, you can see the stance is like three to four inches more narrow, but it's the same height. So if I put them next to each other, they're the same height, but that stance is way more narrow. What you can find is if the ground has any, like, um, any type of curvature to it, or if it's not totally balanced, you take your hands off the rifle for a second to do something, and you might find your rifle just tips over and falls. Again, so having something like this with that wider base can help. So this is getting a little long-winded. We're going to go into all the specifics of all these, but just to recap or like kind of close out the thought. If I'm using a heavy rifle that I plan on shooting long distance with, then I want to have a metal construction wide-based bipod. If I'm trying to just use something to stabilize my run-and-gun patrol-style rifle, then I want something that's lightweight, streamlined, you know, and is easy to carry, isn't bulky, and allows me just enough stability that I can stabilize the reticle, stabilize the shot for something for two to 400 yards. So just a quick tip on that. Again, we're gonna go into much more detail on the Full Spectrum Warrior University on the topic of bipods. So if you want, you can head over there, subscribe, check it out, along with all the other videos that we offer on the website.